What a joy it is to be with you here today on What the World Needs is yeah. Jesus yes. broadcast. Amen. That's exactly what the world needs today. The world needs Jesus. And if we all had Jesus and the love of Jesus in our hearts, yep. amen, glory to God, we would all live, we would all live a glorious life. Amen. We would all live a, a whole much, a whole lot better life than we live today. Amen. Hey man, I just want to say thank you for watching today. We appreciate you for watching. We love you today, and we want you to, to, to get to know this man that we're about to tell you about, and his name is Jesus. Hey Amen. We want you to know this man personally. Yeah. Hey Amen. Because you have to know him with a personal relationship before you can get to heaven. Hey Amen. You've got to know Jesus. You, you've got to get Jesus right down in your heart, amen, and know him and love him today before you can get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to heaven except through me, amen. That's, that's, that tells us right there we've got to have Jesus. We have to have Jesus to get to heaven, amen. amen. If you want to find us today on, on, on uh, uh, Facebook, you can go to What the World Needs is Jesus, type in Facebook, What the World Needs is Jesus, or you can find us on YouTube, just search WOLW videos and you'll find us there, amen. You'll find all kind of preaching on there, amen. You'll find some much different kind of preaching, you, you'll like one of them, I know, amen. Glory to God. I want to read a few scriptures here before we turn these boys loose. Boy, we got some good preaching, some good singing. Oh, glory. We, we're ready to go today and I, I want you to get comfortable and get ready because they're going to bring you some good preaching, amen. I just wanted to read a scripture here, amen. And it's in Luke chapter 10, chapter 10 verse 17 says, And the 70 returned again with joy. <laughs> yeah, they did. See, Jesus had sent 70 out. He'd sent 70 of them out two by two to go into all the cities. Amen. And they went out and they came back. They returned to Jesus and, and, and the 70 came again uh, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. Boy, that's talking about us today because even the devils today are subject unto us. Amen. Even the devil, you know what? When you wake up in the morning, you can wake up and say in the name of Jesus and that devil's got to go. Amen. If he's on your body and you're aching and you're hurting, just wake up in the morning, glory to God, say, in the name of Jesus, get off of my body, devil. In the name of Jesus, get off of my family, devil. In the name of Jesus, get off my finances. In the name of Jesus, get away from my household. Yeah, Amen. Glory to God. That's all we got to say today is in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And that name, that name has power in it. Amen. That name, just that name has power in it. Amen. And they said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. And he said unto them, I behold Satan as lightning fell from, fall from heaven. <laughs> behold, I give unto you power. See, he gave us that power. Amen. He give, he, behold, I gave unto thee power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. You know who the enemy is? The enemy is the devil, amen. Yeah. The wow. enemy is, boy, he, he, he's always on his job too. He never stops. He, he's up with you in the morning. He goes to work with you. He goes to the store with you. He goes wherever you're going. That's where he's going because he's constantly trying to find a little opening there where he can get in. Yeah. That's why we got to stay prayed up, read up, and yeah. ready to go. Amen. Right. We got to stay prayed up, yeah. talking to Jesus. We got to stay read up because this is how we live right here. This is our instruction book on life. Amen. Yeah. This is how we live. Yeah. So we got to stay in that Bible too, amen. He says, I give you power over the serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt thee. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, amen, but rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven, amen. Jesus said don't rejoice because all you can do that. I mean, that's good. We can do that, and we got that power. 
But the main thing is rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. It says in Revelation 20, it says in the book of life. Amen. That record book, which nobody can change, nobody can take your name out of, nobody can, can change anything in that book because that's God's book. Amen. That's God's book and God only can do stuff with that book. If he wants to, he can take your name out. If he, don't, if he wants to, he can leave your name in there. God can do anything he wants, but nobody else can. Everybody down here on this earth, they measure you up, and if you don't measure up, they kick you out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? They'll take you out of whatever you're doing, but yeah. nobody can take you out of, the, out of that book of life. Amen? Amen? God loves you today. Jesus, Jesus loves you, and, and he wants you to be saved. Yeah. If you're not saved, I, I'd pray right now that you would find you somewhere yeah. and ask Jesus in your heart. Yeah. Hey, man, if you'd go on and do it right now, hey, man, you could enjoy this whole service. Yeah. Hey, man, you could, you could be happy and enjoy this whole service with us. Hey, man, glory to God. God loves you today. Hey, man, now worship with Brother Steve Collins as he brings us a song.
Hey, man, thank you, Brother Steve, for that song. Uh, uh, let me say, uh, I, I just appreciate Brother Steve. He, they're they're uh, Pentecostal Power Ministries over there in Larry, Georgia, and I appreciate them so much. Uh, me and Brother Rick, we go to church over there and, and try to uh, uh, help them out over there. Well, you know, uh, uh, they help us out, actually. You know, uh, I'm, we're just proud to go over there, and, and, and if, you, if you're looking for a church and you're in that area somewhere, just go hunt up Pentecostal Power Ministries over there in uh, Larry, Georgia. It's on Larry Down Road over there in Larry, Georgia. Also, let me make another announcement before I get started. Once I get started, I don't be able to make no announcements. So I need to go ahead and get them, get them out. If you want to be turning your Bibles to St. Luke, go ahead and be turning your Bibles to St. Luke. Uh, praise, praise the Lord. St. Luke chapter uh, 7, I believe it is. But on the 27th, which if you're listening to this on Sunday morning, whenever it first airs, it'll be on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. If you're listening to this on Sunday morning, this will be the, the Tuesday. On the 27th, we're having a service over at uh, uh, Sadie's Red Barn Auction over in Gurley, Alabama. That's uh, Brother Larry and his mother's auction over there that, that, that me and Brother Larry, we, we call over there. And, but we're going to have a, a service over there on Tuesday the 27th, which will be, if you're listening to this on Sunday morning, which will be Tuesday the, uh, the 27th. If you're listening to this on Wednesday evening or after that, it's already happened. So I don't know what to tell you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But we just, I know we're going to have a good one. Amen. And I know people's going to get delivered and people going to get saved. That's what we do it for, folks, so that people can get delivered, people can get saved, that we can that, that we can just tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. And get somebody, lead somebody, get somebody on the right track. That's why we try to do these things. But I want to say that we appreciate you today and I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 7, and I want to start reading, uh, I think we're in chapter 7, I got to look here and say chapter 7 the long, goes a long way, praise the Lord, and I want to start reading in verse 41, Luke chapter 7 verse 41, y'all let me know if I'm wrong, uh, here we go, all right, I was fixing to start calling, but <laughs> there was a certain creditor which had two debt debtors. The one owned 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but the woman, since the time that she hath, since the time that she hath come in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Come on now. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that can forgive sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Now, there was this certain Pharisee that had come up to Jesus and he asked Jesus to come and, and said it meet with him. And Jesus, and I, and I kind of looked at that like, well, 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 well that probably, maybe they went to, I don't know, I know they didn't have restaurants back then days, but maybe they had places that they went to eat, you know, it, it did look kind of like a public place to go. I don't know. I, I really don't know how it was back then. I wasn't there. <laughs> Praise God. But I, so I can only speculate. All right, so here we go. And and, and the Pharisee had asked him to go. He said, go, go eat meat with me. Let's go, go uh, meet with me. And so Jesus went. And when he went with him, that there was this woman which was a sinner. Now, now something we've got to understand here is Pharisees, Brother Larry, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't have anything to do with sinners. They, they, they were of God. They're righteous. Let me tell you something, folks. Don't never be righteous. Don't, don't, don't never be religious. Don't never think, don't, don't never tell somebody I'm religious, amen. You're, let me tell you what to tell them. 
I'm, I've got salvation, yeah, amen. Yeah. I've got Jesus, yeah. amen, in my heart. Don't be religious, but be Jesus, amen. Be Have salvation because the religious don't always matter. You can be religious about whatever you do. You can be religious about your work. You can be religious about your car. You can be religious about your house that you live in. You can be religious about what, as a matter of fact, you, you are religious about whatever it is that you put before God. That is your God, and that's what you're religious religiously are doing but my friend whenever we get salvation and we put God before ourselves amen and we put God before everything else and it's God amen it's Jesus Christ here and it's Jesus over there amen whenever we put Jesus first that's when that we know that we've got salvation he said how do we know that we have been, and that we have come from death unto life it's because that we love the brethren it's because that we'll have a love amen we'll have the love that Jesus Christ has put down in our hearts my friend you cannot have that love on your own but thanks be unto God he sent his son oh, yeah. thanks be unto God he yeah. sent somebody that can help us today amen that can give us that love brother Larry right down in our hearts that we can have that love glory to the Lamb of God I'm talking about the love of Jesus yeah. today hallelujah Woo, glory yeah. just about right now I'm having a ball <laughs> Glory to God, I guarantee the devil ain't, eh, eh, he ain't liking it too well, but I'm loving it, amen, because I know that I've got the devil by the tail, amen, and he, I got him going out, he's, he's on his way out. Listen to me, friend, rebuke that devil and tell him in the name of Jesus he's got to go. Yes, sir. Tell him in the name of Jesus he can't say, now this woman was a sinner. And she knew that Jesus had sent me with his Pharisees in his Pharisees, well, it says in the Pharisees' house. And she brought an alabaster box of anointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed him with that anointment. And when the Pharisee which had bidden had seen, had saw her, he spake within himself and he said, this, sure, this man's not a prophet. This man can't be of God. If this man had been a God, he'd know that was a sinner. Yeah. Now, if this man was a prophet of God, then he would know that she was a sinner and he would know that he can't have nothing to do with her. You're not supposed to have anything to do with a sinner. Let me tell you something, friend. That's why Jesus came, baby. That's why Jesus, he said, I come to seek and to save that one which is lost, glory to God. Let me tell you, my friend, how, why you want to go to the doctor if there ain't nothing wrong with you, glory to God. Hey, man, hallelujah. You see, if, if you're not sick, you're not going to go over to the doctor. Amen. Jesus come for those that were sick. Jesus come for those that needed him. Amen. The Pharisees didn't feel like they needed him. Man. They didn't think they needed a God. They thought they already had their God. Amen. And they didn't need Jesus. So Jesus said, I'll come for the sinner. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You see, let me tell you something, friend. You might not be good enough for that church up there somewhere. You might not be good enough. I mean, you might not wear good enough clothes to go in that church over there. Or you oh. might... You're your hair might be too long or your beard might be too long or you might have to, you know, you might not be good enough to go in that church or, but let me tell you something. You're good enough for Jesus Christ the righteous, amen. You're good enough for the one that's going to carry you on to heaven, amen. And that's all that counts, amen. As long as Jesus is on your side, that's all we need today. Hallelujah. We need the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, this woman said it meat with them. She didn't eat, though. She couldn't keep her hands off of Jesus. She was trying to wash his feet. Amen. Drying his, drying his, drying his, she'd wash his feet and dry his feet with her hair. And then she was worse for Jesus. Amen. And that's where we need to be. Amen. And, 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 and Jesus asked this man, and whenever this man perceived that she was a sinner, and he perceived in his heart that, whoa, Jesus don't know. Evidently, Jesus is not a, uh, uh, evidently he's not a prophet, and evidently, and he's definitely not the son of God if he don't know. Amen. So this Pharisee's like, well, evidently he's not of God because he don't even know this woman's a sinner. But what the Pharisee didn't know is that Jesus knew she was a sinner and he knew that he was a sinner, amen, and he knew that, that the woman needed him and that also the Pharisee needed him. Hallelujah. 
Jesus was reading minds back then and he's still reading minds. Amen. Listen to me. The devil can't read your mind. Stay with me now. The devil can't read your mind. Jesus can read your mind. Jesus knows what you're thinking, knew what you thought before you ever thought it, knew the very thought from the beginning of the world. He already knew what you was going to think today. Come on, amen. But the devil don't. No. No. You say, well, brother, Ronnie, how does he know how to uh, get us? How does he know how to uh, come against us? Because he watches you. That's right. How is it? What is it they do? Yeah. He watches you. Yeah. He goes home with you. He goes in, he goes and sits right down in the church where you sit right down on the front pew with you, right down beside you, right down. He's all the time picking you on the shoulders. See there that preacher? He ain't preaching the truth. Just like this Pharisee was saying, if he'd be of God, he'd know she was a sinner. Amen. Listen to me, the devil wants to talk to you. The devil wants to try to tell you it ain't right, it ain't good. Listen, if the devil told you it ain't right, do it three times because he's a liar and the father of the lies. Hallelujah. Glory. Now, he said, <clears throat> he said, if, if, if this man was of God, then he would know that she was a sinner. Jesus reads his mind. Uh, come, on now. Yeah. come on now and start opening up his mail. Yes. Amen. Jesus yes. reads his mind and he says, there was a certain creditor. He began to tell him a story. <laughs> now, this is good, folks. I like this. He begins to tell him a story and he says, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other owed 50 pence. And when they had nothing to pay with, the, 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 the certain creditor, he frankly just forgave both of them and told them, therefore, that, and, then he, and told them that the debt was forgiven. Yeah. And then he turned around and asked the Pharisee, he said, which one is going to love him the most? The one that had the 500 pence or the one that had the 50 pence? Well, he said, well, natural, of course, you know, it's going to be the one that got forgiven of the 500, amen? They're going to love him the most. Listen to me, friend, you might be the worst that's ever been, and you might feel like that you're the, that you're the lowest dog that's ever walked on this earth, but I got good news for you today. It don't matter how low you get, it don't matter how bad you've been, it don't matter what you've done, glory be to the Lamb. I'm talking about getting out there and just living as slutty and as bad as you can live. Glory be to the Lamb of God. But I'm talking about God will reach down and he'll pick you up out of that old miry clay. He'll pull you up on that solid rock and he'll make somebody out of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now he said, now he said, which one loves him the most? And I'm not saying anything about anybody that's a good moral person. That's good. I'm glad you're a good moral person, and I'm glad that you've done all of these things from your youth up, and you've lived the, the way you should live and done the things you've done people right and done everything right. But I'm going to tell you something, my friend. That won't get you to heaven. Amen. The only way you're going to get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus came. He died on that cross. He shed it. Listen to me. They put whenever they said, whenever they took that old spear and they and they plucked him in the side up there, that blood run out. Amen. The Bible says that blood and water run out. That blood run out, and that's that blood right there that's going to save your soul. Every man must have that blood covered his sins. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Yes, you see, the de if the old devil had have known what he done, if he'd have known that whenever he put Jesus on that cross and they stuck him with that blood, and that blood run out. You know what that blood did? It run out right down on the earth. Yeah. Come on now, think about it. Yes. Royal blood yes. run out. Yes, sir. God said. The only way you can get to heaven is through my son, Jesus Christ. He's the only way you can make it. They must, you know that they've always had to be been a blood sacrifice. Yeah. Brother Larry, all the way from the old Bible all the way up, yeah. we've always had to have a blood sacrifice. Go study it out. Don't, don't believe me. Go study it out for yourself. Yeah. They always had to have a blood sacrifice. Our blood sacrifice is Jesus. Yeah. The devil done it for us, and he didn't even know what he was doing. Hallelujah. Had he known that Jesus was going to rise up on that third day, had 
had he known that Jesus was coming out of that tomb, and had he known that Jesus was going to go down into hell and take the keys of death and hell away from him during that third day, he'd have never put him on that cross. Hallelujah. But see, the devil can't read your mind. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. He didn't know what was going on. It was a setup. Brother Steve says it all the time, don't he? He's a setup, amen. God set the devil up, glory to God, and he brought his son down here, and his son died. He was a supreme sacrifice. He was the blood sacrifice to atone our sins, and it's going to take the blood of Jesus, my friend. You listen to me, friend. If you don't get nothing else today, you get this. It's going to take the blood of Jesus Christ in order for you to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Glory. That's just the facts. That's the way it is. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. No man coming to the Father but by me. It's going to take Jesus. He's already went and shed the blood. The blood uh, sacrifice has already been shed. The blood has already been poured out. Glory to God. And all we got to do is just get us a little drop of it. Hallelujah. He's enough for everybody. Praise be to the Lamb of God. Jesus has already went. He's already rose on that third day. Peter told him over on the day of Pentecost, he said, you killed the Prince of Peace. He said, you put him on the cross and you buried him. Hey Amen, you put him in that tomb, but he come out of that grave on that third day. Glory to God. He won the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Won the victory. Now, Jesus says, Jesus says, now, who's going to love him the most? Who's going to love him the most, folks? You've been the chief of sinners. You've been out there and done all of these things, and you oh, you, and, and the church is telling you, the people is telling you, oh, you can't do it, Brother Larry. You can't be a Christian. You, ain't, you can't live. You, you've done all this. You've already done it. You're doomed. The devil is trying to tell you. There ain't no sense even going to God that you can't do it. Well, my friend, let me tell you something. If you've been bad and you've done it bad and you and it seems like that you just can't get it no better, hey, man, just turn it all over to Jesus and let God have it. Hallelujah. Let the Lord Jesus Christ have it because Jesus is the one that's going to reach down and get you. Jesus is the one that's already went and shed the blood. He's the one, praise God. He's the one that's going to help you today. He's the one that's going to pull you up out of that. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care how many needles you stuck in your arm. Amen. I don't care how much, how much of that stuff you smoked down your pipe. Amen. I don't care how much, of, how, many, how many of them drugs that you've done. My friend, I'm talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That came just for you and I. That came just for the sinner. Amen. That's what he said. He said, I come for the sinner. The Bible says here that this was a sinner woman. Hallelujah. But bring thanks be unto God. God said, the Glory to God has saved your soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. All we got to do is believe it. Woo. Yes, sir. Woo, glory. <laughs> All we got to do is believe it. Right. Praise the Lord. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ will save you. Yeah. He said, if you'll just believe Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. He came for that one. He came for that one. He specializes in those that can't be done. Amen. He specializes in that one. Amen. That says that the, the devil and everybody, the world and everybody else has gave up on. He specializes in that one. He says he reaches out his hand and he, put, he puts his hand out there and all you've got to do is reach up and put your hand in his hand. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man the man that can. Hallelujah. He's the man that can. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Jesus says, come unto me. Yeah, yeah. Brother Larry, yeah. he says, come unto me. You remember, don't you? I think so, yeah. You remember when you, right before you got saved, amen? Jesus, Brother Ricky, you remember, don't yeah, you? Sir. Praise God. Brother Chris even remembers, amen? <laughs> He remember, you remember when you first got saved, amen? Glory to God, whenever Jesus said, just come on to me, yes. all you that are heavy, yes. heavy laden. He said, cast your burdens on me yes. for the light. Yes. Ooh, glory, there ain't nothing for Jesus, isn't it? Uh, all that that's weighting you down on your shoulders, all those things that's got you pulled down and, you, and it feels like that the whole, did you know that's how Jesus felt whenever he was right there at the cross? Yep. You know why he felt that way? Because those burdens that you're carrying right now, 
He was carrying them then. No sense in you carrying them now, amen, because Jesus has already carried them and he already took them to the cross and he's already won the victory. Hallelujah. Go. All those burdens that you're carrying down right now, all those burdens that's pushing you down right now, you give them to Jesus. You say, here they are, Lord. You say right now, Lord, I can't handle it no more. I can't take it no more. Right. Lord, they're yours. Yes, right. And when you do that, you get up from there and you leave them burdens right there with Jesus and you tell Jesus, Jesus, you take them and you do away with them. You know what Jesus does with them? He throws them in the depth of the sea to never be remembered against you again. Amen. Friend, He's got his hands outstretched. Always. And he's saying, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come on to me and I will give you rest. Now, if you don't believe that, folks, you try it. Amen. You try it one time. You've tried the devil. You've tried the devil and all his devices. Amen. You try Jesus now. Just try Jesus. Let Jesus in your life. Let Jesus begin to work for you and see what happens. Hallelujah. Amen. The good thing about this is, Brother Larry, they don't have to take my word for it. That's right. no, no, no. Just try it and see. Yeah. Yeah. What you got to lose? Amen. Hell. But guess what you got to gain? Yeah. Ooh, glory. glory. John said, I saw a city. Oh, yes. Ooh, I can't get into that one now. I ain't got time. But John said, I saw a city coming down adorned as her husband. Well, adorned for her husband. Oh, hallelujah. And he said it was a place where there was no more tears, no more fears, no more trouble. Hey, glory. Glory. Jesus, hallelujah, it's going to come down and it's going to touch you tonight, hallelujah, today, glory to God, today is the day of salvation, praise be to the Lamb of God, that woman said, that, that woman was a sinner, and Jesus came for that sinner, friend, I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm glad today to know that I'm born again, on my way to heaven, hallelujah, and the devil cannot take that away from get Jesus. Yes. And the devil cannot take it away from you. Now I want you to worship with Sister Shantae now as she sings a song. Praise the Lord! As I was walking down the street one day a man came up to me and asked me what the time was that was on my watch. And I said, Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? If so, I can't imagine why. We've all got time enough to cry And I was walking down the street one day When a pretty lady looked at me And said her diamond watch had stopped cold dead And I said Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? If so, I can't imagine why. We've all got time enough to cry. And I was walking down the street one day, being pushed and shoved by people trying beat the clock oh, oh I just don't know I just don't know and I said does anybody really know what time it is does anybody really care so I can't imagine why we've all got time enough to cry yeah, yeah. Does anybody really know what 
every time it is Does anybody really care? So I can't imagine why We've all got time enough to cry Standing as always, I'm yeah. telling you what, praise the name of the Lord God Most yeah. High. Sister Shante, I want to thank you. You know, I've tell you once, and I'm going to keep telling you. Me, that gospel music, I'm going to call, I'm going to always tell you because it's just that important. Yes. Listen, people that say, we're, and first of all, let me tell you something. Now, thank you, Lord. Come on, brother. You may not think you are, but let me tell you something. We're all called to sing, and we're all called to play some type of instrument. You're Everybody right. is. You know why? Because the devil, what did he do when he was Lucifer at the throne? It was his job to praise and worship. I believe the old boy would walk up to the throne, and, and praise and worship would just emanate out of him. And, and all the, the, well, the demons now, but the angels that was under his control at the time, we took his place. The Bible says we sealed up the sum. What that means is we took the place of the devil, in, of Lucifer, in praise and worship. Amen. Everybody, every human being ha ought to have the, has the ability to sing and play at least one type of instrument. Amen. Come on. And it's for the glory of God. Yes, sir. Amen. We're supposed to be able to sing, carry a tune, and, and, and maybe strum a guitar, a piano, what have, even drums or whatever, for the glory of God. Yes. Now, you take people that do that today. They, they have regular jobs. Some of them, they do it full time. But a lot of them, they have a regular job and they have families. And on the side, they have a band. They have a gospel yeah. quartet or five or six people, whatever it is. And they book it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They yeah. make bookings around stuff to sing for God. Yeah. They're called to sing and praise and worship God. And there's an anointing on those people. See, if you get around those type of people in that atmosphere, and when that singing begins, listen, don't you let tradition stop you. Like Brother Ronnie said about that religion, if you feel the calling, you run to that altar when they're singing. Amen. I guarantee you, you'll get born again healed. You'll get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you'll go down one way. Praise when you Lord. come up, son, you'll be brand new. Yeah. I'm talking about brand new. Yeah. You'll be just like a baby in the hospital. Right. When they deliver that baby, that's how you'll be. You'll be a brand new creature. Good. Everything that was in the womb was forgot about. It's all old and done. It's all passed away. They pulled you out of there as a baby, cleaned you up, wiped you off, and handed you to your mama. That's what getting born again does. That blood of Jesus will come upon you, wipe you up, and clean you up, and wrap you up, and hand you to Jesus. And when, he, you hand, when you get handed to Jesus, you say, not my will, but yours. Yes, come on. Yep. Now, speaking of not my will, but your will, you know, we've seen that in the Bible. Who said that? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember? He said, Lord, if it's possible, would you take this away from me? Uh -huh. Then he said a most profound statement. Not my will, not what I want, but what right. you want. Right. Right. That's us today. Oh, I, I could sit here and say, well, I want all this other kind of stuff because I'm in the flesh. I watch these commercials like anybody else. You watch television. Don't you let the world tell you how to live and who to be and what to drive and all that kind of stuff. You drive what you want to drive, not because of commercials. Eat, eat what you want to eat. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to... Come on, brother. Yep. I'm not trying to get you to pinpoint and go, oh, I'm just not going to fool with that. There are people out there that try to get you to live the way they want you to live. Right. We ought to live the way God said to live. Yes. Yes. If, if they, you examine them, if they're living the way God said to live, you know, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow the word. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. All right, look here. His will is his word, right? Listen to this. Go to Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, Light into my path. The word we know is Jesus. It said the word became flesh and dwelt among, among us. Let's read it like this. Jesus is a lamp unto my feet and Jesus is a light unto my path. Yeah. He's a lamp unto your feet right where you are so you can see what's going on around you. He's a light unto your path because he sets a path straight and you look down and see that light and you go towards the light. 
How many times have you heard about people that died and come back and they, when you talk to them they go, I saw a light. Yep. Oh, it, it was not like any light. It was unlike any light on the earth. And when I saw it, I was compelled. I was drawn toward it. You can do that here. If you get in this word and you find out who you are in Christ Jesus, remember Brother Ronnie again, he was talking about the devil. He can't read your mind. He couldn't read the mind of Jesus because Jesus went to the cross. Right. If he could have read Jesus' mind, he'd have, he'd have just backed off. Yeah, yeah. He'd done everything he could to, to stop everybody. He'd have whatever he could do to part them to get them out of there. But he, didn't, he could not. That's right. Amen. The Bible says that. Read the Bible. You get this word down in you. Listen, listen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. King David opened up his own mouth and he said, Lord, I've got a hold to your word and I'm going to follow it. You understand? I'm afflicted very much. Quicken me, which means to heal me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Yeah. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. Listen to that. Except he's asking God, he's begging. Beseech really means to kind of beg, kind of, you know, Lord, help me, help me, Lord, 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 come on, please. Except yes. I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth. Now listen to that for a minute. The free will offerings. Come on, brother Larry. He did that on purpose. Uh -huh. You understand, King David, when he said free will offerings, you know what he said? He said, I meant to do that. That's right. I did that on purpose. Let me tell you something. It don't matter how I feel. I get up on Sunday mornings and I meant to go to church. I meant to praise and worship God. I set on purpose in my heart. I purpose to read the Bible, to teach my children the Bible. I purposed in my heart to tell everybody that I can possibly can about Jesus. I purposed in my heart. I meant to do it. When I was sinning, I meant to sin. I, no, I didn't have to do it. Brother Ron said didn't have to. That's right, didn't have to, but I meant to. I set my sights on the Lord because the Lord set his sight on me. The only way that I could get love from, the only way that I could love God and Jesus is they first loved me. Do you think everything Jesus did, he did for himself? The only thing he ever did was all for us. He never did anything for himself and of himself. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, not my will, yours. Why don't we say that today? Why don't we read the Bible? When he said he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, when he said the chastisement needful for me to obtain peace, was placed upon Jesus with, by, for, and because of his stripes, I'm healed. Check this out, Lord. Not my will, but your will. Your will says I'm healed. Your will says I'm delivered. Your will says I'm set free. Your will says I've got a home in heaven. Your will said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Your will said that I'm well able. You know, when, again, the reference to Brother Ronnie, I love that he said, you know, they came back and, and the, they said, the demons are subject to us. He said, listen, ain't no big deal. Right. Don't, don't worry about it. The people today, you see these shows on TV, the house is haunted and, oh, I've been flustered by a demon. Really? <laughs> Let me, I got a question for you. Why do you allow that? That's right. There you go. You don't have to. No. Why, I, I'm talking to you. Why do you allow that? That's right. Come on. You mean to tell me you're a born-again child of the Most High God and you let some little puny demon over here pick on you and rule over you. You're not the Apostle Paul with some thorn in your side. Come on. That's right. Come on, brother. You, listen, when we first moved, i got to tell you, the first moved into our house, my wife, my older stepson, a few days went and I said, we saw something in the house. I said, what did you see? So said, we saw a lady in a, a wedding dress walking up down the hallway. And me, I said, well, did she say anything to you? Did she make any kind of gestures or move or point in any direction? Because that has meaning. They said, no, she just walked from the living room, I mean, uh, from the kitchen down the hallway to the bathroom and disappeared. I said, okay, I'll fix that. <laughs> I said, after today, you'll never see her. I began to preach and praise and worship in my home. Yeah. I opened up all the, now you may have thought I was crazy. I opened up all the windows in my home. I propped the doors open. I opened up all the cabinet doors and all the closets. Come on. 
And I began to walk through my home reading the Bible, preaching and praising yeah, and worshiping God. And I walked my property. I walked the exact corner of my property. And I come back and stood at the front door. I said, let me tell you something, demon. You're not allowed here anymore. You see that driveway, baby? You've got to hit it. And I'll have no more of it. And I blessed the name of Jesus. And I said, thank you. And that was it. Never spoke of it again. Only did it one time. And guess what? They ain't never seen that lady again. When we go to sleep at our house at night, baby, it's quiet. Yes. I mean, you know, let's say there's a storm or the dog pitches a fierce. That's the power of God. That's right. You know why? That wasn't me. That's this word right here. I went down and knew what I was taught to do, what I learned to do, and take authority over any and everything. The Bible said, let them have dominion. You ought to have dominion over your life in this word of God. Yes. You ought to be able to pick up this word and at a moment's notice put a word on here and put a word on there. Put a word on your family. Put a word on your work. Put a word on this world. Put a word on our government. Come the on. Bible word. Put that word on them and expect to see it come to pass. Woo. The word's a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. On, do you know what will happen if, if you do that? Come on, preach it, brother. Hold on, let me just jump over here. We're still in Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words, plural, word one, don't just read one word, take off. That's right. The entrance of thy words gives light. Yes. It gives understanding unto the simple. Boy, I'm glad he said simple. Because I'm a pretty simple fellow. You know what it told me right there? It's not complicated. Oh, you can get deep in the Bible and you can go as deep as you can possibly ever want to go and you'll never run out. Still, yeah. still not get there. And still not get there, that's right. But it's a simple thing. It, you, listen, you just have to be diligent. If you, if you want to exercise and get some muscle or lose some weight or, or you want to run a marathon, hey, you've got to set yourself in a regiment and you've got to be diligent about that thing. Yes, you do. If you want, listen, God's laid everything out. I've told you before, it's not up to God. It's up to us. Yes. If you want what God has, you've got to do what God said to do. And the only way you'll ever know what God said to do is to get in the Word. That's right. If somebody comes up to you and they say, Brother, sister, I, I got a word from the Lord for you. He says, okay. You listen to me very carefully what I'm about to tell you. That word that you're about to receive, it's sure enough better line up with this word. It better line up with every scripture that's in this book. You better be able to find scripture reference for the word that you just received. Otherwise, it ain't here. Oh, don't get mad at me now. It's not a real word from God. You know, there's some people out there that said, boy, I had to give them a hard word. No, you didn't. That's not all that's over with. Let me tell you, our job today is to build them up, lift them up, cheer them up, steer them up. Our job is to break the chains of the devil off of them and let Jesus enter into their heart and let that joy and that peace and that rest and comfort get into them. That's what our job is. My job is never to bring you bad news according to the Word of God. That ain't my job, and that's nobody's Christian job today. That's right. If you want that, read the Old Testament. Yeah, now there was some harsh words spoken because God had a direct line with those prophets, and he said, Ezekiel, won't you go over here and do this? Jeremiah, won't you go over here and say that? And, they did, and read some of their lives, how they had to live. Yep. One of them laid naked on his side for a long time, built a little model of uh, um, Jerusalem or Israel, and then mashed it all to pieces. Yeah. How'd you like to be walking down out there somewhere in the woods and see some naked, wild, hairy man up on the mountain hollering, screaming at you about God? Come on. Go back there and read it. Come on. That's not how it is today. Jesus came and fixed all that. He said, listen, all you've got to do is believe me. Oh, glory. That's you, good. you know, if I come running down here and I said, hey, the, the top of that mountain's rumbling down the side. We've got to get out of here. If you don't believe me, you're going to die. Are you, would you believe me or not? Would you say, you know what, let me just make sure. Let's just go with him and see. Well, if, you, if it wasn't, what would you lose? Like Brother Ronnie again said, what have you got to lose? Yeah. If you don't think Jesus is real, if you don't think any of this is real, you let me tell you something. I'll ask you something to do one thing. Come on, Brother. Jesus, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Come on, yeah. And reveal yourself to me in a way that I know it's you. That I know there is a God and there is a devil. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And there is a Savior and you provided a way for me to get out of here. If you're real, you do that. And baby, you better hold on. Amen. 
Because he's going to show you. He ain't never once in his natural, well, I don't say natural born life. God ain't never once from the beginning to the end when somebody's called on him and he said no. Not you. I'll get them other two, but I ain't getting you. Everybody that's ever called upon the name of the Lord has been saved. Everybody that's right. asked God, hey, are you real? They got a testimony to tell you, this is where I was. I asked God this, and this is what happened, and right. now there's no question in my yeah. heart. If you'll just ask him, okay, and then be patient, remain consistently the same, begin to look, you watch and see what happens. Entrance of thy word gives light. Where'd it go? I got it wrote down here. I'll just, 130. The interest of our words give light, gives understanding to the simple. Now go over here to Deuteronomy. But let me tell you what you'll get. If you'll follow God, if you'll follow the word, if you'll follow his voice, if you'll do what God said to do. Deuteronomy 28 is pretty plain. It shall, it shall come to pass. It means it will happen. When God said shall come to pass, baby, you better believe it. it's coming. It is a positive statement. It shall come to pass. Shall is a legal term. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord God, thy God, that's the word, to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day. Now listen that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. Yes, at that time he was talking to Israel through Moses. However, let me tell you, every word and every scripture in this Bible is for us today. Everyone. Yes, scripture is given to, you, to inspire you, to lift you up, to build you up, yes. cheer you up, stir you up. That's exactly. all scripture is given inspiration to men. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. You can't get away from it. If you'll follow and do what God said to do, you can't get away from the blessings. The Bible says you can't run fast enough. It'll overtake you. That's right. Come on, brother. All these blessings come on thee and overtake thee if you'll hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Do you understand? He just described everything that Abraham had. Everything that, and he, I ain't even done. Just that couple scriptures described Abraham to a T. Go back in Genesis and study some on Abraham and look what he had. Look what God blessed that man with. Had hundreds of thousands of heads of sheep. Had hundreds of men working for him. Had servants all over the place. The man was at that time, I believe you could have called him the CEO of the largest, of the largest corporation on earth. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and I ain't even finished. Yeah, come on, brother. Blessed shall, thy, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Let me go ahead and tell you, let's talk about money, just, just so you'll know. Blessed shalt thou be when you go in, when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies. Not you, not some army. Who? God will. It said the Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They'll come out against you one way. Flee before these seven ways. Let me go ahead and tell you right now. In today's time, the only enemy that you have is the devil. Come on. Your neighbor next door is not your enemy. Your boss at work who's maybe hard on you or hard on everybody, that's not your enemy. What does it say? We, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. Right. We wrestle spiritual wickedness, just to sum it up. We, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. We wrestle spiritual wickedness. Right. Yes. Come on, the, the Bible says, God said, he'll cause your enemy, the devil, that rises up against you before your face. We all know the devil gets in our face and tries to do stuff. They shall come against you one way. The devil and his horde, and they'll flee seven ways. You understand? The devil will come up against you, and if you'll stand your ground in the word, you almost see seven different puffs of smoke just take off. Like a cartoon or something. You know, they all gather, and all of a sudden, they're gone, and ain't nothing but just a little trail of smoke. You'll see seven of them. If you'll stand your ground in this word, God's telling us very plainly what he'll do for us if we'll follow him. Yeah. 
Now listen at this. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Baby, let me tell you right now. When God commands, son, it happens. When God commanded, when Moses raised up his arms and the Red Sea parted, the Bible says it was all night. A, a wind blew. And God caused them waters to part. And when it parted, they went across on dry land because God commanded it and said it to make it so. Right. When God began to speak, read over in Genesis. What did he say? In the beginning. God opened up his mouth and he, see, it doesn't say command, but let me tell you something. I can see God stand up there on the edge of heaven. He said, I command a planet to be here, and I want all these nine planets here, and I want all these stars. Bible says he flung them up there, and not only did he fling them, he put a name on every one of them. Man says we can't number them. God said I numbered them, gave them a name. Don't tell me he can't bless you. You go outside and walk out in the woods a little bit, start looking around, and see the complexity of how this earth and this world's put together. That's right. See how everything just meshes together. Yes, that's right. Don't tell me there ain't no God. Go. The Lord shall command a blessing upon you and your storehouses, and in all that you set your hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I just love to read the Bible. Listen to this. The Lord shall establish you and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto you. Let me tell you something. Jesus made it possible for God swore unto us through Jesus. Yeah, come on. He said, have I not sent my son? Have I not sent my only son down there to take everything from you? Uh -huh. I, was, I thought about wiping you out. Come on. Noah come along. I thought about wiping you out. Yeah. Moses come along. I thought about wiping you out. Yeah. I'm going to send my son down there and redeem you. Yeah. you I want you to know what head. kind of God yeah. I am. Lord. I want you to know what kind of love I have for you. I'm giving you my son. I've given you everything I have. I don't have anything else to give you. I gave When I sent Jesus, I gave it all to you. Come on, amen. Would you give all of it to the Lord today? Would you Would you really? Let me ask. I'll talk to you. Oh, I want to know something. Would you really, honest to goodness, could you today say without a doubt, Lord, I'm just done. Yeah. Yeah. I've had enough. I've had enough. Yes. Lord, just take it. How many times have you ever said this? Lord, if you don't fix this thing, just take me out of here. Huh? Come on, man. I've said that. You now, huh? Hello? How many times have you said, Lord, I can't deal with this anymore. This has been dragging on for a long time. And Lord, if you don't do something about it, just take me out of here and take me home. Yeah, come on. We've all done that. We've all done that, and that's a foolish statement. Yes, it is. God knows where you are, and he knows when you're ready. Trust me, he'll, he'll find you when it's your time. That's right. Don't concern yourself with that. That's right. Here's what you do. You stick with this Bible. You yes, stick sir. with this word. Yes, sir. If you're in trouble, know that there's a God that loves you and know that he's well aware of your situation. Trust me, he is working it out to pull you out of where you are. And when he pulls you out of where you are, you need to begin to thank him. Thank him while you're in it. Thank him when you get out of it. And then you say, Lord, I give up. What do you want me to do? I'm tired of running. I'm tired of fighting. I can't do it anymore. Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Amen. If you'll surrender to Jesus and call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved, yes, yes, and you'll sir. be so glad you did. Yes. Guys, I love you. Got to go.